Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to make presentation on the role of sector coupling for net zero in Korea. I am Itei. First of all, I would like to explain about the concept of sector coupling, which is essential for net zero. And thank you for the opportunity to make presentation today. Today. I'm going to first explain the meaning of sector coupling and the role of sector coupling in Korea. So on the title, you see net zero in Korea. By 2050, Korea should make the greenhouse gas emission zero. Now it's 100 million tons of carbon emission, but it has to be reduced to zero. The key element is electrification to achieve net zero. Here, electrification is the key to carbon neutrality because the electricity supply will be integrated, centered around renewable energy. So far, our energy sector has been centered around upstream sector like oil and gas. and it, the energy produced from oil and gas was converted to the secondary energy and then transmitted to buildings and industries. Or consumers receive the supply of the primary energy. Energy system can be classified into various sectors. From energy sector perspectives, we have the energy sector, including oil and gas. The supply and consumption are determined based on the supply and demand of oil and gas. And they are physically and chemically separated. And heat and secondary energy is also, the price of the secondary energy is also determined based on the supply and demand of the sector. As for economic sector, we have energy supply side and energy demand side. So supply of the primary and secondary energy is supply side and buildings, transportation, and industries are on the demand side. When we talk about integration of these sectors, the first thing we think about is energy sector integration. From primary energy to electricity and heat, this is the one-way direction in terms of the energy sector integration. And also, the integration direction can be done in an opposite way. That is possible in the energy sector coupling. Here, we can use P2G technology to send electricity back to uh, hydrogen and hydrogen through electrolysis, water electrolysis. If you think about the iteration of energy coming from the primary energy to the sources of the energy, often it reduces the efficiency. But renewable energy has significant meaning in sector coupling. For example, if we convert the surplus uh, renewable energy into heat, that is very useful. And also, when we need electricity, we can use primary energy and convert it into secondary energy. If electricity is oversupplied from secondary energy sector, then it, it can be the surplus energy can be stored in the form of gas or in other forms. And there are many energy storage systems. ESS stores energy into in the form of chemical energy. And 
B2G stores energy in the form of hydrogen. So carbon captured from oxygen can be stored and converted to methane. This is included in P2G. So the captured carbon is converted to methane, which does not emit greenhouse gas. So from methane, you can capture carbon and convert it to methane again. If you repeat such a process, you don't, um, you don't have uh, the creation of carbon, carbon or greenhouse gas. In the economic sector coupling, renewable energy means um, a lot. So we install renewable energy system and this enables consumers to become energy self-sufficient and renewable energy also enable the distributed energy resource supply system but renewable energy is highly dependent on weather condition and location so the if oversupply of if surplus um, energy is produced from the renewable energy, then consumers can sell the surplus renewable energy to others, which is the concept of prosumer, but that is not really uh, often seen in reality. And we can think about a service in connection with the electricity system. We can store energy, and if necessary, we can send the energy to the electricity system. Under the economic sector coupling, we can think about V2G, vehicle to green technology. Electric vehicle is equipped with uh, high specification batteries. And by using the surplus energy from the electric vehicles, we can supply energy to the sector that needs such an energy. Sector coupling encompasses both uh, economic sector coupling and energy sector coupling. Our research institute has worked hard to explain the meaning of sector coupling. And the question we receive is, what is the sector? What kind of sector do you mean? And we receive a lot of questions. That's why we created this term, sector green uh, energy integration to explain about the concept of sector coupling. Germany is the country that is most um, proactive in, in adopting sector coupling concept. In Europe, 40% of all P2G projects uh, is being driven by Germany. There are two purposes for Germany in doing so. The first purpose is that it wants to observe the VRE through sector coupling. As of 2019, 43% of the power generated in Germany were supplied from the sources besides coal, gas, and oil. And 28% of the energy supplied in Germany was from variable renewable energy. But in reality, it is difficult to uh, observe more VRE in the current system. So in Germany, they have to deliver the electricity generated from uh, the North Sea wind farms to the south part of the country. But that has not been easy. The electricity created from the north should be transferred to the south part of the country, and that requires energy storage and effective transportation of such energy. That is why they created a lot of projects like uh, storing uh, the energy or creating methane from hydrogen. And Germany is one of the countries that have the highest target of greenhouse gas reduction. Germany has actively supplied renewable energy 
However, the greenhouse gas reduction effect has almost disappeared with the closure or shutdown of nuclear power plant. And if you look at the portion here, it's twice the level of Korea. That's final energy consumption fuel. So the conventional energy sources are used for heating uh, for buildings, so it will not be easy to replace all the um, natural gas with renewable energy. That's why Germany is taking P2G method to create carbon neutral um, energy source. Then do we need sector coupling? And if we need sector coupling, what would be the uh, use what could be the useful use case? We can use sector coupling as a way of achieving decarbonization like overseas countries, but Korea is different from Europe. Korea operates the electricity system without interconnection. That means that we have no other way to supply uh, electricity if there is a, a problem with the electricity system. So far, we thought that we have to supply the primary energy at rational price continuously, but we need to secure electricity security. Last year, in collaboration with IEA, we conducted a research on Korea electricity security, and um, the research report proposes that we need measures like P2G or P2H. It is desirable to see an increase in renewable energy, but if the renewable energy increases um, out of control, then that will pose problems in the electricity system. As you see here, it has high variability. And when the renewable energy is expanded and in order to operate the electricity system in a more stable manner, we sometimes have to curtail the output of renewable energy. Because if there is surplus uh, energy from supplied from renewable energy, that could lead to a dangerous situation. In the case of Ireland, they restrict the level of non-synchronous penetration um, to 65%. By doing this, they are trying to maintain the strength of the electricity grid. In Jeju Island, there are a lot of um, cases of curtailment including PPM and BTM, it will be amounting to almost 60%. In 2015, renewable energy output curtailment happened three times, and in 2020, the amount of renewable energy supply significantly increased. Compared to the level of supply increase, recently there have been a lot of curtailment of renewable energy output. So the oversupply of renewable energy led to the curtailment of the output. When we mix salt in water, we see a certain amount of salt um, sinking at the bottom like that, we need to improve the electricity system in a way that they accept renewable energy in a more efficient way. And sector coupling is an effective solution in this regard. Some people say that we can use Jeju Island as a test bed seeing it as a miniature of the land, but Jeju is different. Jeju has the capacity to use electricity um, in a way that is similar to the, the European way. And during daytime, 
the demand for energy is relatively low. But in Jeju Island, actually the land side uh, will be more uh, affected by the renewable energy. So the land side of Jeju Island will have a higher, higher necessity for the sector coupling. And we have P2G business models based on electricity system. One of them is off-grid project. In the long term, they can be connected to the offshore wind farm. But if the uh, hydrogen production site is located far from uh, from the site where they have to supply their hydrogen, then there could be problems. But you also need to consider the size of the hydrogen production facilities. If people can become self-sufficient in terms of the use of hydrogen, then there will be no problem. However, considering general situation, it is difficult to achieve economies of scale with uh, hydrogen. Because depending on the cases, we cannot um, take advantage of the, the merits of distributed energy resource. And also we need to consider using the aggregators in order to strike the balance between supply and demand. Also, if we establish infrastructure in areas that have higher demand for hydrogen, then that we will be able to use hydrogen uh, in a more uh, productive way. Also, we can consider providing ancillary services. As mentioned by many of the previous speakers, it is very important to secure flexible resources. So far, battery and pump uh, have been used a lot to ensure flexible resources, but it's important to respond to seasonal uh, seasonal characteristics of the energy supply. That's why people talk about P2G. But we have to consider underground gas storage. In the case of Europe, they have the spaces to store hydrogen deep under the ground. But Korea does not have such a ground structure. So for Korea, it costs a lot to store and use uh, hydrogen deep under the ground. So industries may need to be able to consume hydrogen directly. And we will have to adjust the amount of inflow of input of hydrogen and it will be important to strike the balance between the supply and demand of hydrogen. In Korea, we reduce the power output at nuclear power plants during holidays. In the case of ancillary service, P2G is not just the means of storing energy, but it can be helpful for electricity systems. This is what was reviewed by Europe, and they have already established a test protocol. So in the elect also Korea is trying to strike the balance between supply and demand by adjusting generators through what is called COMCUP, we are striking the balance between supply and demand of energy. If we can use this linear system, P2G can be used as a, in, in the form of ancillary service. 
According to our plan, we were supposed to use a renewable, increase the portion of renewable energy to 30% by 2040. That means that the solar power will be used uh, three or four times uh, larger than uh, the wind power. During daytime, the solar power will increase, so we may probably see uh, more surplus energy produced from solar power. Then renewable energy supply may someday exceed the amount of demand. If such thing happens, we have to curtail the output of re renewable energy. By 2030, the renewable energy accounts for 20%. But still, um, under that situation, the output curtailment is uh, necessary. This is monthly surplus status. Surplus uh, occurs especially a lot during March and April and May. If you look at the graph below in May, August, and October, and December, if you look at the second and third graph, they store the energy during daytime and they discharge the energy during nighttime. So, ESS is required to minimize the curtailment of the output. But during May and October, even if you store the energy during daytime, it will be difficult to discharge the energy during nighttime. So if the blue color, the demand increases, you can convert um, the energy to, to meet the demand during daytime and nighttime uh, by using sector coupling. On average, the renewable energy hourly curtailment rate expected for 2040 is 10 gigawatt. And if you look at the graph, 20% of what is written in the roadmap could be covered with the surplus uh, renewable energy. And not only P2G, but also ESS, pump, and DR, and other uh, elements and measures exist to control the surplus amount of renewable energy. In IEA, large-scale network smooth seasonal variability is being discussed. And that is from phase five, which means that supply of renewable energy reaches 50 to 70, 60 percent. But in the case of Korea, from phase two, we need interconnection between countries, but that is difficult to achieve in Korea. Then we will have to move towards the, the measures uh, written above in the table. Compared to Europe or other countries, we will have to secure the measures or tools to respond to seasonal uh, change in the demand and supply of uh, energy. Roadmap of sector coupling. Sector coupling is not uh, highly commercialized and sector coupling costs a lot. So we may use heat. So we will be able to adopt P2H first. We have large scale uh, collective energy system. So P2G can serve as a distributed energy uh, system. In terms of uh, institutions or systems, 
we may consider DSO or TSO operating system as for integrated energy system. P2G does not only refer to electricity but also hydrogen and methane. In the end, we will need integrated energy system. Now we need interconnecting between different energy systems. So we first need to activate the sector coupling businesses, including P2G. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.